Good morning. <coughs> Welcome to St. Gertrude's in Edgewater. Today is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass parts today are from the Mass of St. Anne, which you can find in the white inserts in your Breaking Bread book. Today's 1030 Mass is being live streamed. The musical compositions for today's live stream Mass are used with permission under Zero. So if you could please rise, greet those amongst you, and join in our opening good morning, hymn. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All are welcome. Number 421. Number 421. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. But dear friends in Christ, as we celebrate today the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we read from our Gospels one of the most challenging parables that you can ever hear of. Now, the main point of this parable, I'll summarize it at the beginning of this Mass, and I'll repeat it again during my reflection. It is this. When we concentrate too much on what we do not have in life, we lose sight of, of that which we have. For those times in our lives, when we have concentrated too much on what we do not have, that we forget the blessings of God, let us pause for a moment and ask God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you spoke in parables. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you showed us the Father's love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you taught us how to live. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Bless you, we adore you, we glorify 
Uh, we now invite our children going for the children's liturgy of the word to please come forward. Now we say our own prayers. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our readings for the liturgy today begin on page 200 of Breaking Bread, page 200. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for, for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew Glory to jesus told his disciples this parable the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard after agreeing with them for the usual daily wage he sent them into his vineyard going out about nine o'clock the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You two go into my vineyard, and I'll give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Now, going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around, and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You two, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, 
these ones walked only one eye, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I can't hear you. You know that by now. You just have to raise your voice in a way that not only me can hear you, but Jesus can hear you. It's Sunday. You have no right to be sad. We have to be happy. Because it is the Lord's day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Now that's better. I just feel like drop, dropping the mic and just going back. Um, I hope you all had a very good week. And if your week was not good as you expected, every Mass is an opportunity to tell Jesus about that. And I am sure he's going to give you this week a week that gives you the joy you did not have last week. Uh, my week was overall good. Uh, my football club won the first game in three games yesterday. So um, I'm only praying for Liverpool or Manchester City to lose one point in time. <laughs> um, we face today in the gospel one of the most difficult gospels, gospel readings to understand. Because it turns around completely are ideas of merits and justice. Who gets what they deserve? That is the question in the gospel. We face a God who knows how to mix justice and mercy. We human beings don't mix the two. We do justice separate. We do mercy separate combination of the two is so foreign to us and so here in the gospel we see god exactly doing that every one of us has our own idea of what is just who should get what how can someone come at five o'clock and get the same rate as someone who came at 6 a.m or 7 a.m if anybody should run their business like that, it will close down before the end of the day. But we are not God. And there is a lesson there. And that's why I feel like if we look at this passage only from the level of living wage or equal pay, we are missing the point of it all. The point about this all is about who deserves what in life. And that each of us is a beneficiary of the grace and mercy of God. If God should give you and I, every one of us, what we truly deserve in life, we will all be a mess. Think about what we think in the middle of the night. Think about our own inner thoughts. I'm, I'm not just saying you should be, uh, judge our life based on what we do on the external. There is a line in the scriptures that say, If you, O oh Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who can survive? But with you is found forgiveness and fullness of redemption. And that's the point in today's gospel. That every one of us is a beneficiary of God's mercy. Over and over again, uh, someone told me a couple of uh, weeks, I think months ago, that this parable is the most un American of all the parables in the Bible. Because we know so much about meritocracy and justice. If there's any country in the world that knows so much about meritocracy, 
I mean, I got here uh, to know that you can even get extra credit. I was like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Just do something, you get extra credit. But then to come to think about it, and that's, that's why this, this gospel is a bit, can be a bit offensive. It's about how dare them to get as much as I have gotten. Listen to, the, to, to those who came first. What did they say? Say, you have made them equal to us. Externally, it seems as if it was a question of justice. Internally, there's a selfish interest involved. And you can see about, there's something about us human beings sometimes. That when we have more, we start to feel superior than the other person. We produce more. We start to feel that we have to be superior to the other person. There is something about us that our joy, and this is very, this is sad in a way, but it's true. That some of our joys in life is the fact that we have something that others do not have. And like I said, it's painful, but it's real. We have this, they don't have that. So we are superior to them. I can shop in this place. They can shop in the same place. I am superior to them. But what God is saying is this. That who among us has not gotten something they do not deserve in life? Who? What have we done to be born in this country and not in other parts of the world. What exactly have we done to merit that? What have we done to be just citizens and not the refugees out there? Think about it. What exactly have we done to deserve that? And listen again to what, uh, towards the end of the gospel something interesting. When the landowner came out the final time and said um, why have you been standing here idle all day? Hear their reply. They said because no one has hired us. Isn't that sad? That tells us sometimes it's not because they came late. It's not because they woke up late. It's not because they are lazy. It's simply because the circumstances of life has not shone on them. So when we think about the opportunities we have in life, when we think about how much we have, ble- we have been blessed in life, two things. One, let us stop comparing ourselves to others. You will never be happy in your life if the basis of your joy is comparing yourself to others. I don't have what they have, so I must have it. You will never be happy if that is your attitude in life. And secondly, let us have an attitude of gratitude. Be grateful for what you have in life. Because there are some persons who don't even have what you have at all in life. The most important thing in the parable is that the landowner has even called anybody to come and serve in his vineyard. That is the grace involved. And like I said at the beginning of the Mass, in life, if we concentrate too much on what we do not have, you will lose sight of what you have. If what we daily think is about those things that we do not have, we will completely forget the blessings of God that we truly have in our lives. Those who came first have forgotten that even what they have, the denarius they have for the day, is the usual daily wage. What happiness would it give them for those who came last to receive less than they have done? So let us not forget this. If we concentrate too much On those things we don't have. You will never have joy. And at the same time, we will lose what we truly have in life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of our lives. And whatever we have had in life. Give us the grace to be grateful. And to be able to share whatever we have in life with others. Especially those who have no need. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Shall we now rise to profess our faith? I believe in one God. God's ways are higher above ours, yet our prayers are always heard. Let us bring these prayers before the Lord. For Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, may all who lead us in faith listen attentively to the voice of the Father. May they serve generously upon the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For people who feel discouraged by their employment, may their skill sets find a home and various opportunities to serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For children who are ill, who su- or who suffer disability. May we work to find solutions to childhood diseases and work to ease the long-term burdens of parents. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For a new awareness of prayer in our households, may we surrender to the mystery of God May we be free of addiction to technology and isolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of the earth, may our work never cease to provide healthy food and clean water to every person and nation. We pray to the Lord. For people who are ill, may we listen closely to the voices of those who cry out in pain. May we seek God's mercy and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who have recently died, may our loved ones be raised into the joys of heaven. May we who grieve upon the earth Know God's tender care, especially for our intention today, Kathy Strube. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I also want us to bring before God uh, this morning all those who celebrate their birthdays today and this week for Elaine, Dana, and also Chloe, who all celebrate their birthdays today. Uh, for those who have their doctor's appointment this week, whether for a regular checkup in the hospital or for surgery, chemotherapy, dialysis, or radiation, for every single pregnant woman who will be giving birth this week and those who are giving birth currently, for those who have job interviews this week, for those who have to write examinations this week, and for those who will be traveling this week, we bring all these people before God and we ask God to please hear and answer our prayers for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, you are near to all who call on you. Hear our prayers 
and grant what the Spirit bids us to ask. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn today is number 666, <coughs> Seek the Lord, number 666. <coughs> My dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we move and live and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels who praise you, as in joyful celebration, we are claimed. Oh! 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, upon of all holiness. Make holy their fathers give to pray by sending down your spirit upon them like you do for them, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. And we give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Blaze our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the great hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Oscar Romero, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And receive your command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, but in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with a blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
hands with your spirit. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. May this ringing of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, Jesus Christ Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be heard. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Union hymn today is number 501, All That Is Hidden, number 501.
Let us rise and let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in meaning, in mystery, and in the manner of our lives, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. That is good, good. Now we have only one announcement for today uh, that is written. The other one I will make up. Um, after today's Mass, you can sign up for the parish Fun, Run, and Walk Souls of St. Gates. If you have already signed up, your shirts are in the back of the church today. I am trying to keep myself fit so that I can run the marathon but my spirit tells me it's too late. Uh, now, I want to sincerely thank you for coming for this Mass this morning. If you are coming to our church for the first time, 
you can see how beautiful and how happy we are. So you just have to come back. <laughs> Thank you all for coming for Mass this morning. And have a blessed day and a happy week ahead of you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And my house is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. A recessional hymn today is number 429, Canticle of the Sun, number 429.